We continue now with our series, Divided We Stand, A Street in Our School. Here is Zaida Lizayas to introduce tonight's story for our Spanish-speaking audience. La historia de Jerena continúa con la representante del estado, Cheryl Coakley Rivera, miembro del Comité de Escuelas, Norman Roldán, y diseñadora de facilidades de Springfield, Noel Owens. Ellos hablan de la participación que han tenido en la renovación de la escuela. La conversación empieza con Owens hablando sobre las fugas y cómo solucionarlos. Well, the, the water, um, through a series of, of tests and um, kind of experiments that we've been doing, we've found that the water is not necessarily coming from the water table um, and groundwater coming up, but what has happened is that all of the drainage of the water from above combines with the water table and helps to raise the level. And at a certain point, um, there's been some breaks in the waterproofing pretty much in the roadway. So when we have a big heavy rainstorm, for example, or a snowstorm, and you have a lot of the rain and the water and the, and the runoff, it combines to raise the water table to such an extent that it finds those breaks in the waterproofing. And once it finds those breaks, then it just runs all over the top of the tunnel A section and then just naturally finds the, the weakest or the lowest point and drops down from there. So you may see a leak at one particular portion of the wall, but it may be occurring 50 feet away. And that's what we've been trying to discover is kind of where that's at. And that's something that you're confident right now that can be fixed in Tunnel A? Correct. Okay, how much are we talking? Uh, the proposed uh, solution to that would be to literally uncover the roof of Tunnel A and go back in, peel off all of the, all of the concrete and all of the, the dirt in the roadway, and then put a new waterproofing membrane over that and then put the roadway back. Okay, and that's money that you have to apply for through the Department of Transportation, which Correct. brings in... Um, State Rep. Cheryl Coakley Rivera, I know that there's $10 million that you secured for transportation money. This money isn't promised yet for this project. They have to present the designs. Well, it was in the transportation bond bill. Mm -hmm. And what that means is it's just, uh, and it's for a number of different roads um, and sidewalks and so forth in the North End from Fisk Avenue, Bernie Avenue, and so forth. And the bottom line is it's up to the governor to work with the city to decide to allocate monies for this project and whether it fits the criteria. Okay. Now, that brings me to another point. You grew up in the North End. You live in the North, north Ends. You went to Herena, which used to be called New North, but you're not feeling this of, uh, of fixing the school. <laughs> this is not something that, that you uh, agree with. I, I, first of all, I think uh, Pat Sullivan, um, our architect here and the, the school department um, today um, in the last year has they have done a, a wonderful job in terms of trying to address the problem, in terms of trying to fix the problem, in terms of um, trying to communicate what they're doing and what the problems are to the public, um, trying to be uh, comprehensive in terms of their um, solutions, should I say, mm -hmm. instead of just piecemeal um, band-aid approach. Um, so I want to applaud them for what they've been doing. Um, but I'm not sure, and in talking to some people as we took a tour about eight months ago, um, this, they're not sure whether this is actually going to fix the problem. And you hear the runoff. Well, the runoff, rain is a natural part of life um, in our environment. And so, yes, the water table rises when it rains. And so that's always been the case. It's not, that's not anything new. And it's always been the case that it floods. And and we're talking about a lot of problems throughout the years with flooding and, and now the children with asthma and generations. This isn't a, a new problem. Right. It's flooded three, four times. I'm sure you covered that. Um, so I'm not sure if what they're proposing is going to fix the problem. And that's by talking to them. Mm -hmm. 
they're not sure either. And this is, you're talking up to $30 million. That's a lot of money. So I'm saying at the same time, we're looking at maybe fixing the problem. We should be looking at building a new, a school, new school for these children. And how much are you talking for that? That's millions of dollars as well. I mean, just take a pick. Forest Park Middle School, Sumner Avenue. Um, we've done great school. Brookings is now mm -hmm. underway. Um, so, you know, we have built new schools. That's, mm -hmm. uh, that's not um, the issue. The issue is it's going to take time right. to put Harena on track for to be a new school. And, you know, every year they say it's not needed and they put a Band-Aid approach or somebody, some new superintendent comes in, some new school committee person comes in, some new architect comes in. Um, and proposes I have the answer and they don't have the answer and then four five six seven years later we have another flood or we have some more contaminants somewhere in the building that we find in the meantime where these children are suffering the teachers are suffering the faculty suffer suffering we have the highest rate of asthma in that community we have the highest rate of dropout in that community we have the highest rate we have we're under three underperforming schools right within a one mile radius of that area so not everything comes from the condition of that school no, in terms of the problems, right. but a large percentage of problems come, in my opinion, from that school in terms of asthma, absenteeism, and so forth. All right, so I want to bring in uh, Norman. Norman Roldan, a school committee member. You also went to Herena. Um, clearly, he would like to see um, if Noel, Noel's plans are going to work. If, if they work, I mean, that would be fantastic. But you also um, are a little bit cautious uh, about where this is going. Yes, I mean, I agree with Cheryl, um, our state rep. Um, we both went to the school and we saw it. We saw the water from day one. It's, it was nothing new for surprise for us when uh, later on, many years, we, we go office and we still have this problem. So my my... I'm, you know, I'm cautious. I, I like to see if this fixes the problem. It's more of a band-aid to me. Hopefully it's not, but, but if it's not, then I'm with Cheryl and the state rep that we need to look at another solution for uh, our community. Um, and yeah, we have, th this could be a cause of it, of our kids, you know, the, the asthma rate is high. Mm -hmm. We have issues with, you know, kids not showing up to school because they're sick. That will affect the education process. I mean, they need to be in school to learn. And if they don't have the right environment and the right uh, uh, feel for the education, they're going to fail, and and obviously it shows a little here. Um, yes, we've done a lot of improvement. Um, right, because uh, they and have improved the air quality at correct. the school, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Correct. And and yes, and you see that, and it goes to prove it, it, the improvement was done. And guess what? Our, and now Heron is one of the top schools in the city that's improved in less uh, in less than a year. Um, but it goes academically. back academically because it yes. was, it's a level four. It's a level four, right. Right. but right it's now, weird. if you look at their rating, they're actually level two. Mm -hmm. um, but because they're on the level of track, level four, they have right. to say level four. Right. But it shows, I and mean, we agree, that if you fix a problem, the kids will learn and, and it's a better environment for the kids. We don't see that right now, um, where if the school happens to fall again into you know, uh, disrepair, mm -hmm. we're going to have this issue again. But in the meantime, as, as uh, I guess politicians sort this out, you've been mm -hmm. uh, charged with the uh, job of trying to do the best, I guess, to fix Right. Tunnel A is where you started. You, you have to look at Tunnel B and Tunnel C. Correct. Uh, there is something new coming at the bottom of Tunnel B, which Correct. is exciting for the kids, I, and mm -hmm. you can mention that. Tell me what's happening. Uh, the, uh, we're building a indoor playscape area, and as a, um, as a piece of that, um, Herena School has always been um, in the middle of a public wall tunnel system and the greatest concern has been especially you know with things that happen down in Newtown is the fact that you know there's there's um, ready access from the public to to get to the children mm -hmm. so one of the pieces to that whole puzzle was to put together some type of um, security vestibule between the mall area and the school um, we built some very small little houses, very, um, look very Dr. Seuss-like. Right. And from there, we've been continuing on that path of um, trying to make it um, very child-friendly. And from there, we've, um, can, we've been doing some uh, drawings and designs to put an indoor playscape in, um, very reminiscent of Jack and the Beanstalk. Mm -hmm. So. And that'll be ready in September? Um, by September, yes. Uh, we're hoping to have it completed by the, uh, the end of school so that the, the children this year will have a chance to, um, to work and play on it. 
Okay, well, I want to thank you all for joining us. I have many more discussions, obviously, to come on this as you move forward, hoping to uh, make improvements at the, at the school. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.